If L is perpendicular to the line segment and passes through a midpoint, it means that if we have two lines, one is the line segment. Line segment is a line which has two endpoints, and an other line bisect or intersect this line segment into two equal parts. and passes through the midpoint of the given line segment then that line is called the right bisector of the line segment theorem number 1 any point on the right bisector of the line segment is equal distance from its end point now you see in the diagram a and b they are the end points of the line segment and m is a line which bisect them and also this line is perpendicular to a b we will prove that any point on the line lm any point either upward from the line segment or downward to the line segment that point will be equal distance from a and also from b suppose if the length of pa is 2 cm then pb will also be 2 cm so any point which lies on the line lm anywhere on this line it will be equal distance from the end point of the line segment in our diagram the end point of the line segments are a and b and we take p a point which lies on the line l n it means given that a line l n this notation we use for the line because a line has two end points we can extend the line from both sides a line l m intersect the line segment ab at the point c C is the midpoint of AB where the line LM bisect AB that point is called C such that LM this notation is used for the perpendicular LM is perpendicular to AB and AB is congruent to BC you know this line this notation congruent 
we learn this class 7 chapter 10 ac is congruent to bc congruent also mean equal because c is a midpoint of ab that's why ac and bc they both are equal segments and p is a point on lm p is any point which lies on the lm now we have to prove that p a is congruent to pb pa is congruent to pb because according to the statement any point which lies on a line will be equal distance from the end point of the line segment the end points are a and b and that point is p which lie on lm according to the statement pa is called congruent to pb in the statement we have the given and proof the first part of the statement of the theorem is always given and the last part is the proof of the theorem now come to the construction in some theorem it not necessary that construction will include it in all the theorem according to the theorem we do the construction or sometimes there is no construction in the theorem we join p with a and p with b you see clearly we have three triangles there a p b a p c and b p c now we have two triangles a p c and b p c we will discuss these two triangles first we take the correspondence of a b p and b p c a c p and b p c this sign is used for the correspondence if in any triangle we prove three sides are congruent then the triangles are congruent if two angles and one side is congruent then triangle is, triangles are congruent and if one angle and two sides are congruent then also triangles are congruent because there are six elements in any triangle if we prove three elements it means that both triangles are congruent so we see that which things we know about the triangle some statements uh, are given some reasons are given as in the statement and some according to the definition we give the reason to that statement now ac is congruent to bc this is also given ac is congruent to bc this is given so in the reason we write there given angle acp angle acp this angle angle acp is congruent to angle bcp i didn't mention here the notation of the angle so you write here the angle of bcp why the both angles are congruent because c is perpendicular on ab or also we can say that this is angle of 90 degree because perpendicular will always of 90 degree pc is congruent to pc also pc is common in both the triangle acp and bcp pc is congruent to pc now we prove two sides and one angle we prove three elements are congruent in both the triangles it means that triangle acp is congruent to triangle bcp and what is the reason side angle side postulate because we have two sides and one angle when triangles become congruent it means that each side and each angle of the given triangles are congruent now we can say easily that pa is congruent to pb and what will be the reason corresponding sides of congruent triangles is it clear yes come to the other theorem theorem number 
and this is the converse of theorem 1. You will see that almost the statement is clear. Only one point is different in these two statements. And according to that, the overproof will be changed. And some points will be changed in the statement and reason. The given is AB is a line segment. Point P is such that PA is congruent to PB. Why we write this given? Because in the statement, any point equal distance from the end points. In the previous theorem, any point on the right bisector of the line segment. There is the difference of the statement any point equal distance from the end point of the line segment. Now this is already given that P is equal distance from A and B. What will we prove? That P lies on the right bisector of it. In the previous, P already right on the bisector and we prove in that theorem that P is equal distance from A and B. Now this is the converse of the previous one. Given is AB is a line segment. Point P is such that PA is congruent to PB. In our pre previous theorem, PA is congruent to PB was our proof. Now this is our given. And to prove the point P is on the right bisector of AB. Again, we have a construction joint P to see the midpoint of AB. Again, we have statement and reason. According to the diagram, we have two triangles PAC and PBC. PAC and PBC. Triangle ACP correspond to triangle BCP. Again, we see that which sides or angles are given. PA is congruent to PB. PA is congruent to PB. This is given. PC is congruent to PC. This is common in both the triangle. And AC is congruent to BC. Because we said in the construction that C is the midpoint of AB. So that's why we can write AC is congruent to BC. Now both the triangles are congruent because we prove three elements of the triangle. PA is congruent to PB. PC is congruent to PC and AC is congruent to BC. In the previous one, we take two sides and one angle, but according to the theorem in this, we take three sides. Triangle ACP is congruent to triangle BCP, and what will be the reasons? Side, side, side postulate, or you can also write side, 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 congruent to side, side and side. Now angle ACP, I told you when the triangles are congruent, it means each angle, each side is congruent to the other one. Angle ACP is congruent to BCP, corresponding angles of congruent triangles. But when you add ACP, and BCP, it becomes a straight line. ACP and BCP. When you add these two angles, we get the straight line. And you know that straight line is always of 180 degree. Straight line will always be 180 degree. But ACP and BCP, they both are equal. It means that when we divide 180 upon 2, each angle will become of 90 degree. 
and the angle of 90 degree will always perpendicular i told you before in the previous one when the perpendicular is given it is understood that that line is the angle of 90 degree if the angle of 90 degree is given it means that that line is perpendicular now pc is perpendicular to ab as angle c in both the triangle is of 90 degree so ca is congruent to cb we have already done this in the construction so pc is the bisector of a B. Why we said because A C and B C are equal and C will be the midpoint of A B. So that's why we said that P C is a bisector of A B. These theorems are very very easy of chapter twelve. Uh, there are six theorems and exercises are also included in your syllabus because. Next year, inshallah, you will give the exam of board, and in board exam, all the exercises and all theorems are included. But in ninth junior, only we will do the theorems, and in ninth senior, inshallah, we will do the exercises of this theorem also. Now, the third theorem and the last theorem of this lecture is the right bisectors of the sides of the triangles are concurrent. Concurrent mean the lines which meet at one point. That point is called the point of concurrency. There is a difference between congruent and concurrent. Concurrent mean common point and congruent mean they are equal in length or measurement. The right by sector of the sides of the triangle are congruent. Now, given only the triangle is given ABC, and we will prove that the right by sector of all the sides meet at one point. To prove the right by sectors of AB, BC, and CA are concurrent because there is a triangle, so it means that three sides will be there, and also the three by sectors of the of this triangle will be concurrent. In our construction, draw the right bisector. When we are proving the theorem, always we draw the bisector of the sides or the angle bisector only of two sides or two angles, and we will prove this for the third one. So, in the construction, we will draw the bisector of any two sides, and we will prove this for the third one. Clearly, you see on the screen and also in your book that draw the bisector of AB and BC. And the both bisectors meet each other at point O. Draw the bisector of AB and BC which meet each other at the point O. Join O to A, O to B and O to C. OA is congruent to OB. If you see only the portion of AOB, this is our first theorem. If we see only the portion of AOB, this is like our first theorem that any point which lies on the right bisector of the line it will be equal distance from the end points of the line segment it means we can say that oa is congruent to ob because o lies on the right by sector of ab and a and a and b are the end points of the line segment in the reason you will write the statement of that theorem each point on right by sector of the segment is equidistant from its end point same we can say this for ob is congruent to oc the same reason will be here because o lies on the right by sector of bc so that's why we can say that ob is congruent to oc 
So OB is congruent to OA and also OB is congruent to OC. It means that OA is congruent to OC. OA is congruent to OC. If you remember, we have done a property of transitive. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then obviously A is equal to C. That property we are applying here is OA is congruent to OB. OB is congruent to OC. Then we can say that OA is congruent to OC. From point O is on the right by sector of CA. But point O is on the right by sector of BB also. O is a point on the right by sector of AB and BC. It means that it is also the right by sector of three sides of the triangle which are congruent and the point of congruency is at O. If O is like lies on the right by sector of AB and also on BC, it means that that point also lies on the bisector of AC. So here we will prove that O is the point of concurrency of three sides of the triangle AB, BC and AC. You cannot learn the theorem only once. You will read the statement again and again. Then according to the statement, you will draw the diagram. And then you see that what will be the given and what is to prove and which thing, which reason you will give to prove your theorem. Yes, we observe that from this theorem that the right by sectors of the sides of an acute triangle intersect each other inside the triangle. The right by sector of the sides of the right triangle intersect each other on the hypotenuse. And the right by sector of the side of an obtuse triangle intersect each other outside the triangle. This is the information for you and you must learn this for the objective and also for the next theorems. These are the key points. The right by sector of the side of acute because we have three types of triangle with respect to angle. Acute angle triangle, right angle triangle and obtuse angle triangle. And definitely these triangles have the right bisector and the point of confluency according to the angles, the acute angle triangle, the point of confluency will be inside the triangle. In right angle triangle, the midpoint of the hypotenuse and the obtuse angle triangle, obtuse angle triangle in which one angle is greater than of 90 degree outside the triangle. We will use this in our practical geometry. Okay, students, if you have any queries about it, we will discuss in the Zoom class. Inshallah, we will meet there. Allah Hafiz.